Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you my Lightroom wildlife workflow so that you could take an image that looks like this and make it look like this. I'm going to be processing two different images of birds in this video. In the past, I have demonstrated my Lightroom processing workflow for wildlife photography, but like many people, I've kind of changed it over the years and refined my technique a bit. Also, with the last update to Lightroom, they introduced the texture slider, and I really believe the texture slider works great with wildlife photography, and I've incorporated it quite heavily in my workflow. Hence, I wanted to do an updated video. Now, we're going to start out working with this image. I like to crop early in my workflow. It really doesn't matter when you crop, but I like to crop early. It's just a habit. Um, most people tell you that you probably crop at the end, and again, it doesn't matter. So I would start out by cropping the image. And when I hit the crop tool, you could see it really doesn't need to be cropped. I was fortunate enough where I got relatively close to this bird. Also, I was using a long at lens with a teleconverter. If you're interested in all the gear I used, the settings I used, and the exposure info, you know, what f-stop, what shutter speed, all that stuff. It'll be in the description below the video, so you'll get a better idea of what I was using, where I was focusing, where I was drawing exposure from, and all that. Look in the description below the video. Now, great, I don't have to crop, so let's just jump right into processing it. <clears throat> My habit is, what I do is I look at what the image needs most. And really, it's a pretty decent exposure. It's got good focus. Uh, but when I look through it right in here, this little these feathers in here, they're very bright. They are white feathers. So there's not a lot of detail there. So I want to do the first thing I want to do is try to get detail throughout the entire image. So I'm going to go to the basic tab and I'm going to bring the highlights down. So I'm just going to bring it down till I see some detail in there. What I tend to do and those of you that watch my videos know my workflow for just about anything. The first couple slider moves I'll do is really taking contrast out of the image. I'm making the image as flat as possible. I borrowed that from videographers. When videographers grade video, first of all, they'll shoot the video very flat. And then they'll grade it at the beginning, make it even flatter. When you do it that way, you'll minimize noise. And you'll be able to then make that video look like anything you want. You want it to be like a desert, dusty look, you'll be able to do it from there. If you want it to be dark and noir look, you'll be able to do it from there. If you shoot dark and noir and then decide you want to make it, you know, dusty and deserty, it's going to be impossible to do. So that's why we shoot raw. So we have kind of the flatter image. And then at the beginning, I'm going to make it even flatter. So I brought highlights more towards midtones, and now I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit and bring those more towards midtones. So in effect, I've just made this image flatter. Next, I'll start to introduce some of that contrast by getting a white and black point. And I do that by holding the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac. And click on the white slider, and I'll move it to the right till I see some color bleeding through. That means I'm starting to clip the whites. When you're clipping whites, that means it's absolute white, no detail is there. So I want detail throughout my highlights and whites. So I will back that off till all those colors disappear. So I'll just keep backing it off, backing it off, till doop, they're all gone. Next, I'll do the same thing for blacks. I'll hold the Alt or Option key again. Alt if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, click on the black slider and I'll move that. And in this case, this bird has a black eye. I want that black. So we'll leave that black like that. And then I'll look at the image. It's still kind of maybe a little bit, bit dark. So I'm going to just bring it up a little bit more. This was dappled light. As you could see, there was like a shadow on the bird here. It's brighter here. So it's a little more challenging to process when you're dealing with dappled light. But I kind of like that black point. So I kind of, as you notice, those of you that are new to my videos, I jump around. I don't just go right from top to bottom. If exposure was off, I would probably move the exposure slider first 
but exposure was fine. So I jump right down to sh highlight shadows first, then I do whites and blacks. Now, I don't like to add contrast with the contrast slider. I prefer to get contrast with the white and black point, and then if I need any more contrast, I'll go to the tone curve. And I usually will use the drop down and go to medium contrast, see what that looks like, or strong contrast. Now I'm going to go to medium contrast. That's actually a little bit too dark in the darks for me. I'm just going to push it up just a little bit. So I'm going to just modify it just a touch. So this is the shadow side and pushing it up will make it brighter. So I just did a minor adjustment there. Now I'm going to jump down to the presence section of the basic tab and go to the texture slider. And I mentioned that to me, this is a game changer. It works so great with feathers and fur. I mean, even at 100, it's not really overbaked. I mean, and look at all that great detail there. So I'm going to back it off, though, because I'll be doing other things to add some sharpness to it. But I think, yeah, I, I could go really high with texture. It's unlike clarity. If you go too high with clarity, it starts looking like pseudo HDR. So with texture, though, you could go very high. So I kind of like that. And I will add a bit of clarity. Clarity will affect the luminance values a little more so than texture will. So we add, eh, I'm going to back that off a little bit too. So we have then dehaze. I'm not going to do anything with dehaze here. It's not hazy. Uh, vibrance and saturation. I'm going to add some saturation, just a little, maybe around 10. I don't want to misrepresent the bird. Whenever you're processing wildlife, you really shouldn't misrepresent the animal. So don't make the beak more orange or yellow than it already is. Don't, you know, you just want really you know, nice rendition of the animal that's true to what it was. So I'm going to turn saturation up to plus 10. Now I see I have a sensor spot right here. So I'm going to click and get rid of that just because it's bothering me. I'm going to resize it. I'm using a Apple magic mouse. So I'm just dragging my finger along the mouse uh, to affect the size. You could affect the size, of course, here with this slider. And you could also use the bracket keys. The left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. I want that center circle just a little bigger than that spot. And I'll click on it. And I don't like where it's sampled, so I can move it. There, that's good. All done. Got rid of the sensor spot. So pretty good so far. I like everything. Um, I did, you know, I don't want to do anything with split toning. I'm going to jump down to detail. Now this was shot at relatively low ISO with a camera that has good high ISO um, performance. There is a tiny bit of noise and I do noise before I do sharpening. Noise reduction before I do sharpening. So there's a tiny bit of color noise. I usually will do that first. Color noise, there's kind of little, if you look very closely, I'm not sure you'll see it in the video though. There's little, mostly little red and blue dots. Sometimes there's little green ones too. And I'm just going to move that until that color is gone. So there's just dots, gray dots, not, not red blue and green dots. Then I'm going to take, and that actually got rid of a lot of the noise. So I'm going to take noise reduction and move it up. Now you don't want to overdo it with either the luminance noise reduction or the color noise reduction because you will soften the image. And we just added all that texture and clarity to get that nice uh, sharpness. And we don't want to obliterate it with the noise reduction. What you can do is go to the detail sliders here and bring back some of that detail by moving these to the right. You may introduce some of the noise though, so you just be careful with that. What you're better off doing is get rid of the noise, then go up to the sharpening slider. And now, specifically, I want to look at the feathers of the bird. I'm not going to worry about the background, and I'll tell you why, even though I might be introducing noise when I do that. But I'll move it up. Looks like I could go pretty high with this. Like 57. Now I did reintroduce some noise in the background, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to mask it with the masking slider. Hold the Alt or Option key in again. Alt if you have PC option. If you have a Mac, go to the right. Wherever it's white is being sharpened. Wherever it's black, it's not being sharpened. So I'm just going to move it. So it's mainly sharpening the blue heron and nothing else. So, so far, so good. Looks good. So, I like it so far. I think I'm almost done, but 
Now it was dappled light and you know, it might be because I'm a little fatigued staring at it, but just this part right in here just looks kind of out of place dark and maybe a little bit in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to have exposure up. I'm going to have feather and flow all the way up and I'm not going to have auto mask checked. I'm going to get a larger brush by using my magic mouse. Just drag my finger on it. If you don't have a magic mouse, if you have a regular PC mouse that has a center click wheel, just spin that wheel. And I'm just going to paint in here now just to brighten it up a little bit. Undo that last one by hitting Command Z. I think that is a little better. I'm just going to maybe tone it down just a little bit. Yeah, I, I like that better. There's before and there's after. Now, it's not really misrepresenting the bird because that is just dappled light causing that kind of look. Bird did have a darker spot right here, and uh, it's still there. I didn't like make that white. Now I'm going to get a new brush. I'm going to click new, and again I'm going to leave exposure up, and I'm going to come across the beak of the bird here. Make it just a little brighter. I think I went out the, outside the line, so I'll jump over to the erase brush. I also could just hold the Alt key and take that edge away. All right, that looks better, I think. Take that down a little bit. There's before and there's after. I think that looks much better. Now, I'm pretty much done with the bird. I just sometimes, I like to add a vignette. It helps, especially when you have these brighter corners, it helps draw the viewer's attention more towards the center of the image where the bird is. So I'm just going to add a vignette a little bit. Um, sometimes I don't like the way the vignette does what it's doing. So I might not add the vignette, but what I'll do instead is I'll get another brush. And in, with this brush, I'm going to bring exposure down. And I'm going to get a huge brush and I'm just going to take, I'm sorry, flow down to like 50 and come in here and paint in a darker area over here. I think that's where it needs it more so than anywhere else in the image. There, just like that. So there's um, before all the brushes after all the brushes and I'm done. So I'm done with image one. I consider this one done. We'll go to this image. Now this image has a slightly different issue. Uh, it's kind of dark, whereas that other one was a little bit brighter in areas and I had to bring highlights down to bring some um, definition into the uh, feathers. This one's kind of the opposite. Now with this one, um, I'll crop again. And again, I was fortunate enough to get close enough and I had gear. This was done with different, a whole different camera, a whole different lens, actually. And again, all that info will be in the description below the video. So with this one, I don't need to crop, but I'm going to go. It's dark, right? But I'm not going to do exposure. It's not really underexposed. It's just that the darker feathers are a little dark. So I'm going to go to shadows and open those up. Now we could see some great detail on this guy, right? Look at that. Nothing done to the image at all, just, and you can see how sharp it is and everything already. So pretty easy. Now I'm going to bring highlights down. So again, I'm making it flatter. I'm bringing the shadows more towards midtone. When I open up the shadows by moving the slider to the right, take highlights down. I'm bringing those more towards midtone. So I'm making the image in effect flatter. Now I'm going to go to the whites slider and I'm going to reintroduce some uh, contrast, hold the alter option key in and move whites to the right. And I'm starting to clip up here in the brightest part of the image. It has nothing to do with our bird. So I'm actually just going to look at the bird. I don't want to clip any of the feathers. So I'm going to back it off till the feathers stop clipping. And I don't care about up here. So we're good to go there. Now, as far as blacks are concerned, this is darker. So we have some clipping right away. Now I'm not going to 
open it up, I don't think. Oh, maybe I will. Yeah, why don't we do that? We opened up blacks a little bit too, so we have some detail throughout that bird. Next, I'm going to jump to texture, this magic new slider, and I'm going to move it up considerably. I think I moved the, other, the previous one up to around 50 also, if I remember right. Plus 43. And this one, pretty high too, in the 40s. Now, clarity again, maybe not as much on this one. I don't think it needs it. So I'm not going to do anything there. I am going to bring saturation up just a little bit. Like around 10. Almost that background is almost like too, too saturated. Isn't it? So I'm not going to move saturation up at all. I think it's adversely affecting the background. So what I could do instead of that is go to the brush and I'm going to reset exposure. I'm going to turn saturation here up to like 13 to start with. We'll get a brush. I'm going to stay on the bird. I'm not masking it. I have, I got to put flow all the way up though. And just help bring out the subtle colors of the feathers of the bird. Come in here. I'm just going to do it real quick. But you can see that's kind of got that kind of blue sheen going on the feathers on the head. And we got little bits of yellow in the feathers and so I think that's good and it doesn't then adversely affect the background like I felt the other adjustment was doing um so I'm done with that I don't think I need any other brush adjustment uh don't need any clarity I'm going to jump down to I don't I think it's contrasty enough um I could try medium contrast here I I don't care for it I'm going to leave it like that I'm going to go to detail um, you can see by default, I have when I import images, all the sharpening, noise reduction, all at zero. Um, there is a way you could do that. So when you, you might have noticed when you import images in Lightroom, you'll often get a default amount of sharpening added, a default amount of color noise reduction usually added. I don't like that. I like it to come in clean. I do have a video that demonstrates how you could set up Lightroom so it will not give you any default sharpening or any other settings and I'll link that video in the description below this video if you're interested in having that work that way for you. Now as far as this image concerned it was shot at a much higher ISO than the previous image and you can see there's a lot more noise a lot of color noise so I'll jump there first and I found this slider you really don't have to move it much I'll move it right to 20 and it really eliminated the color noise there's still noise but there, there's no more color dots then I'll go to the luminance noise reduction. And I'll just move that to like 35. Take a look. It kind of, you kind of get to know by looking at the noise where you got to move the slider. Like I know just glancing at it somewhere around 40 is probably going to get rid of it. So I went to 35 and it got rid of most of it. So if I move it to 40, you know, it didn't really make that much of a difference. So I'm going to leave it at 35. I really, again, don't want to overdo it because I'll turn this off and you can look at the detail in the bird itself. And you can see how we lose a little bit of that definition. Now, we did get rid of the noise that was in there. A lot of color noise on this one. So that's good. And when you zoom out, you can't really tell as much. A little bit. Oops. There. A little bit. So that's cool. That's cool. We'll bring it back with some sharpening. I think somewhere sharpening around 40 is probably working. And then I'm going to mask it so it's mainly doing the bird. I'm again, I'm going to hold that alter option key, move to the right. And it's mainly doing the bird. So there's before and there's after. And we'll zoom in. There's before and there's after. So not bad. I think that's good. It was at a pretty high ISO. So I think it did a pretty good job there. All right. Now, um, vignette. I don't really want to put a vignette on it because I don't want the bird darkened down here. But this white part up here is bothering me. So what I will do is I'm going to do the spot removal tool. And 
you're going to need to do it in clone mode. I'm going to show you what happens in heal mode, uh, but I'm just going to get a larger brush that's going to, you know, cover this, and I'm just going to paint over this area here. All right, let's let it do its thing. Okay, it kind of, you know, I don't know, move this up a little bit. See this like dark area over here? Go to clone mode. Watch, just click clone, and it should look a little better. Yes, it does. So, kind of got rid of that in a way. I can come over here. Okay, kind of duplicated that. I don't want to duplicate that. That kind of dot there. All right, that looks better. Now, I need to go on top, and I have all these other overlays in my way. So I'm going to go down here in the left-hand corner where it says Tool Overlay Auto, and I'm going to turn that to Never. And then I'll be able to come in here and, and do stuff a little better. And what I'll do is I'll just keep kind of doing this until I get the background in these corners looking like I want it to look, or at least better than what it was. I don't want anything kind of overly distracting back there. Um, I just want it kind of, you know, blurred like it is, like it was, but just not white. So that looks much better. I'll turn the tool overlay back to auto. That way when I'm over it, they're all there. Close that tool. Now, um, I don't want, again, I mentioned I don't want to add a vignette, but I do want to darken it around there a little bit. So again, I will get the brush and I will come in with um, exposure down a little bit. And I'm going to bring flow again down to around 50. Get a humongous brush this time. And come up in here and just kind of darken around there. And every Now because I have flow at 50, it's not coming on full strength. It's going on lightly. But I could turn that down a little bit. And then I could come in and every, every time I brush across, it adds to it. So I think that's better. Okay, let's do a before after. There's before. And there's after. Before. After. Go to the previous one. I didn't do a before after there. There's before. And there's after. Before. After. You can see how I shifted kind of the focal point from the right side of the image more to the bird itself. And similarly for this uh, image here, I uh, just brought the bird out more prominent in the shot. And that's it. That's my updated workflow for working with, in this case, feathers. Um, in future videos, I'll do a workflow for maybe fur and things, you know, other different types of wildlife photography. And maybe even like domestic uh, animals like cats and dogs and stuff. I'll do some videos on that as well. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.